Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. So today in the chapel we have 2 Corinthians 11:14. For Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. So just still kind of watching my words and trying to figure out who my real friends are and you know that kind of stuff. Just life, just life, and trying to keep a positive attitude. So, yeah. All right. There is good news. Yep. I finished it. Yay. Okay. If you're a first time viewer, you won't understand that. But I'm just saying. <laughs> if you've been watching a while, you know what's in this bag. And let me see here. My camera. I had it on manual. Now it has flipped back to auto. There we go. Okay. So, I finished it. I finished it. I finished it. I finished the sweater. And I have this much left over. But, I might actually use some of it. I don't know yet. Um, so... Here it is. I do have to weave in the ends, and I still have to sew on the buttons. Okay. But there it is. It is all nice and done. Um, I put a trim around the armholes. Um, it's not blocked yet either, which will help as soon as I get it blocked. It won't look so bad. But I put a trim around it, and I'm actually thinking I might take and put a trim around the front part here but I don't want it to go across the back so it would just go from here down and we'll see um I think I'm gonna wait until Christmas and until this gift is given because roommate doesn't like things around the neck like I do I, I don't so I don't want it too tight. I don't want it too anything. And I'm just going to um, play it by ear. And then I can always add on just the front edge and make it a kind of a, a trim like this. So, I mean, you can see the difference. And it's not blocked. So, where I've pulled through those two, it makes it kind of look funky. The back actually looks better than the front. And it's because I haven't um, blocked anything. So, um, yeah. This side doesn't have trim. And this side does. Uh, I don't know. So, roommate will decide. That's, But I just, I have to get the buttons on. I still haven't decided which buttons. Um, if you remember, I have the two. I really think, I wanted the handmade ones that I found, um, just because they're handmade, I wanted those, but I think the dark brown might look better, or actually this, that size and shape might look better, so, um, I've got these, and I've got these, so, let me see here. It would look like this. I don't know if I can hold it up there. Or like that. I like the size of these. I don't like the brown. And I really like these. So I think we're going to end up with these. And I will uh, sew in one on the edge corner because this has one, two, three, four buttonholes. And I have five buttons. So that way, I always try to do that just because if they lose one, you know, you don't have to go back and redo all the buttons. So I'm thinking that I'm going to use those. And the others are commercial anyway but that makes this 
handmade and all of that so I will weave in the ends and I'll put on the buttons and then you guys will see it with the buttons on probably around Christmas um, I'm not gonna uh, put it out there for a whole lot because I'm gonna finish the blog post about it I to take pictures as I progressed so yeah the formula for that sweater is online and I'll get it finished um, I was thinking about doing it today but it might be Thursday before I get that done so that is oh, sorry that's the only thing I have in totally hooked now I have been working on some things and I have things in the basket so the first is the geo haven't worked on it at all um, and this is I'm showing you everything I've got there for a while I had lots of little projects going in that now I don't I have this one that I've kind of declared in timeout until I can get back to actually looking at because I have to count every stitch and I have to make sure this is one I wish they'd have done off of a chart because I could do it so much easier just saying so this one's kind of in timeout um, then I have the little squares that I'm working on for the round the world style um, afghan and I I cleaned out a tote that I'm gonna put these in so that they're not in my bag because I found that when I go to work on them I've lost a couple of them um, even when we were on vacation in Branson I found two of them down in the couch where I was just sitting and apparently they fell out of the bag and went between the thing so before I left, thank goodness, I found them and I tore all the couches apart. Roommate was like, what are you doing? I said, I had squares down in there. So, um, yeah, I uh, am going to put those in totes. I'll leave the yarn in the yarn bag just because it's easier for me to um, transport in a yarn bag. But... I do have a tote that's down here that I'm going to it's just one of those shoe box totes and I'm gonna put them all in there so I haven't made but like one or two of those because I got distracted oh sorry I'm I don't know why I'm yawning I'm not really tired hmm but it is what it is okay so in this bag as you know I have been working on this shawl or this uh, scarf oh my goodness all right now I have one issue and I'm hoping that I'm just that it's just a yarn issue that it's different so in this picture and I have double checked my hook I checked everything for gauge it's all the same um, I just I don't know I if you look at this picture this right here is where that light blue oops this right here I hate doing things in the camera because it's reversed this is the light blue that's where it stops now the problem is is that this looks a little darker so it looks like the start of the dark now so it it, it looks kind of like but when I get mine out this one isn't as dark on the bottom it doesn't have that kind of color change but you'll notice here's the color change and this is all I have for a color change it doesn't seem as long now maybe just maybe there's more yardage in a different color and I'm taking too much into account when looking at the picture as to where it should fall for color um, we will see 
uh, there could be more of this darker blue, which is going to make it, you know, I don't know. I just don't know. And if it's going to be super short, eh, I'll find something to do with it. But the length that it appears now just doesn't look like it's going to do right. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, maybe I am taking too much into account for the color change and how long it looks it should be. You know, can't always tell with yarn. There's no perfection, but this is commercial made yarn, so a lot of those come darn close to perfection. So, I have that that I'm still doing. I still am on my second color. We'll see where it goes. Um, and it's actually a pretty simple workup. I'm really happy with it. And that's a good thing. So, uh, ugh, sorry. I use, I'm losing hooks, so I have to be careful where I'm putting them. So I was working on that, and like I said, I've gotten a little bit further. Yeah. I just forgot to put the pattern in there. And that's by Yarn Inspirations, and it's designed by Tamara Kelly of Mo Mogli Blog, M-O-O-L-G-Y, Mogli, Mowgli. Mowgli only has one I in it, I mean O in it, and it normally ends with an I, but anyway, not going there. Don't know how to say it, but I'm saying it improperly. So the last thing that I've been working on is something that I started, and I spun this fiber. This is Merino, and... Um, I got it from Jane and it's amazing super soft and I started and did a few rows and thought oh, this would make an awesome scarf now because it's merino I'm thinking it would make awesome mitts for RJ so I need to I, I'm actually contemplating ripping this out and starting over and making him some mitts. I don't know that he'd like that color though. It, he does pink, but he doesn't really do this eggplanty type color. So, scarf for RJ. I do still need to get RJ something for Christmas, and I need to do my daughter's other half, which I have a plan for him. So, um, yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I may keep going. I might make a scarf. Uh, I've always thought about making one of those scarves with the slit in it. Um, I've made tons of infinity scarves, tons of just the thin scarves that wrap around my neck a few times. The other thing I thought about on this is to make a shawl. Um, and I make a lot of the virus shawls because it's a super simple workup. But I think I'm going to look for another free pattern on a shawl. And there is a another one that I did. And it was part granny square, part virus shawl. And it really looked cute. So if I can find that pattern, I might do that. But, yeah. I don't know. This is not... It's just me playing. I don't know what it's going to be yet, nor where it's going. Probably I'll take it out and do something different. Uh, just don't know. You know, sometimes you start something and it just isn't really speaking to you. But I can't sit in the evening and not work on something. And the two that I have going right now are super fine. And so I have to think about them and I have to chart them and I have to watch... So if my eyes are tired or I'm squinty, I just can't work on these. I, they are thinking patterns. So, um, and this one, I need to move out to the front room so that, or to the den so that when it does come time, I can actually do it. But I got to put the squares in a tote so that I just have the yarn. <laughs> that's, that's terrible, isn't it? Mm. Oh, well. All right, so you guys have seen everything that I have been crocheting. Like I said, the sweater is done. 
I just have to put on the buttons and work in the ends. That's cool by me. Um, let's see here. I don't have anything in the pots, but I do have something on the wheel. And that is, I have, oops. I have the white, um, and it's not wanting to focus. I don't want to take it off because I played heck getting it back on there the other night. Um, it, uh, oops, there we go. Let's see if that will. It's just the same wool. It's a single ply wool that I dyed and did the um, sweater with. And so I have this much left that Worm has taken apart. And I have it all kind of like laid so that it, yeah, it's in strands. And then I just kind of laid it in here so that when it comes out, it comes out one strand at a time. It was in a ball. Mm -hmm. So I will be working on this most of the week. And then hopefully we'll get to do some dyeing fun. Um, I'm going to try and get back to my goal this next year. Um because I have been crocheting and I've proved to myself that I can make everybody's Christmas. I want to do one. I, I've got some roving in there that I need to get done. I want to do one ball a week spinning. And it normally feels like, I don't know, two bobbers. And just, but I want to get all the yarn done. I want to work on it next week. Next year, I think, is going to be a year of spinning. I'm going to spin. I've got two fleeces in there that I need to spin in the grease. I've got wash roving in there that I'm going to spin. So, like, I have been working on stuff to crochet all this year. I think I'm going to spin and then make stuff next year. So, I want to stop and plan out what I do. I'm going to spin, I'm going to spin the wool regardless, and then I'm not going to dye it until I pick, figure out who, what I'm making for who. The projects honestly probably won't be big ponchos next year. Um, they'll probably all be uh, shrugs, shawlettes, hat, mittens, that kind of stuff. Scarfs. Because I don't think that I can pull off big projects with, because all the big projects I did, I didn't spin the yarn, except for the sweater. Now, I spun that, I dyed it, and it has taken me months to get it that far. So, yeah, that's, that's a lot. So, it, they'll probably be smaller projects, but I'm hoping to use all hand spun next year yeah we'll see how that goes <laughs> but I will say this I'm spinning all white so I don't have to sneak from roommate because roommate can see white being spun I'm using white spun for everybody so there will be no clue given away so I might get a lot more spinning done and that's my goal is I want to get that one box of um, roving out that I have and get it done and dyed and marked for what I think it's going to be. And then I want to get those two um, Shetland fleeces done. And I do those in the grease. And then I have a consignment fleece with, I don't know, I think it's got some rabbit hairs in it. It's got they have a farm and they started keeping any and all soft fiber and I'm going to spin it into one and it's just a we grew this thing and I'm gonna spin it and crochet it I don't have to dye it so that's a good thing uh, and I think we're gonna start a small blanket and just I think I'm gonna do it in rounds so that that way whatever I do um, 
can stop wherever they run out of yarn or wherever they run out of fleece. So I'll do what I can with it, but I'm blending it all together, just spinning it and making it. And it's going to hang on their wall. It's an heirloom piece like my granny's um, poncho. RJ grew the, those were his first sheep. He grew the wool. Um, it's a four generation thing. I knitted on the buttons and she knitted on it. My aunt knitted on it. And so it, it is what it is. Okay. So I do have that one to do and I plan on getting all of that roving out of there. And then I have some fleeces that I need to bring from the farm and I'm going to start going through my fleeces and what I'm going to keep, what I'm going to go and get it down to reasonable. So anyway, so that's on the wheel. Um, in the fields, I have kind of a funny story. It's not anything we can eat. Um, or at least I don't think so. So I'm not going to eat it. I'm not going to try. So this summer I redid the front of the house and we got rid of all the grass in the two little squares and we put down cedar chips and roommate's mother found a couple of little planters. They're fake concrete, but they look like concrete. Anyway, so I planted some lavender in the center and then I put just sweet potato vine. It's an annual. It's not sweet potatoes. It's just sweet potato vine. And I spun it and oh my goodness, these things domed over. They were beautiful. Well, we had our first frost and the smaller one was totally dead. And it was like, oh my goodness. So I decided I was going to clear them out. The other one was only about half frost bitten, but it's because it was twice as big. So what was underneath wasn't, but it looked stupid to leave one there and take one. So anyway, I took the small one out first and no big deal. Got it, bagged it. Um, if you've ever seen an annual sweet potato vine, when the leaves go brown, they look like they're mush smothered around there. It, it just looks nasty. So anyway, um, I go to the second one, which was a bigger one, and only half of it was that mushy color, um, brown and yucky looking. And so I thought, well, I'll take and just clip it all away from the lavender and just unwrap, you know, because part of it was still green, so it didn't just fall off. So I start snip snipping, and when I got down to the where you could see the soil, the soil was like bubbled up and it looked like something was sticking. I was like, what the heck is that? So I grabbed the sweet potato vine and I pulled up. And this is what came up. <laughs> yeah. So normally when I do sweet potato vine, I do normally have this um, root that comes off. I have never had a root this huge. This is like bigger than my hand. And again, I don't think this is the sweet potato vine you can eat. When you cut this open, it's not um, orange inside, so it's not really sweet potato, but it's called sweet potato vine. And it's just an annual for pretty flowers. And it puts off these runners. And I've never, ever had one that big. They're tubulars, by the way. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's huge. It looks, on, from this side, it looks like a huge old walnut. I don't know. And this thing still hasn't died. And I pulled this up like two days ago. So yeah, I was it Sunday and this is Tuesday? Yep. And that, it's still green and pliable. I don't know how much juice is in that thing, but dang. <laughs> anyway, so that's my funny story. I, I don't know what I was growing, but apparently, but it is sweet potato vine but it's not the edible sweet potatoes. I, I don't know what the difference is, but I'm pretty sure there's something. But when you cut that open, it's not orange on the inside like a sweet potato would be. And again, it's purple on the outside, so you know. I don't know if you can eat it, never tried it, don't want to, just not going to. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> Okay, and I have something. My eyes are... I'm going to get my hair trimmed today. Yes, it's too long. Um, in RJ's world, 
Okay, so he has a couple of cool things that he is praying about. And I just want you guys to come like mind, whatever's supposed to be will be. Um, he's applied for something that is pretty amazing. And I'm not just saying that because I'm his mom. I'm, I'm hoping that if that's what's meant to be, that God will step up and take care of it. Um, it's awesome. And when the time comes, I will tell you exactly what that is. And he's got another one, another awesome thing that he is attempting that if it comes to pass, I will tell you, just y'all be praying for him. Um, he's strugg struggling financially to pull off his dream. And yet he's still going for his dream and he's still trying. Um, and he... He, he, he says, Mom, I'm all in or, or go, you know, go broke or go home. All in, you know, go big or go home. Whatever any of those phrases are, he says, I'm in. He says, I am trying my best. And since he was a kid, he's always said, I want to make a living with my rope. So he's trying to live his dream. And I wish you all would just come together and pray for him. Send him your mojo your good vibes your whatever you got send it to him because i kind of wish i was more like him because he's throwing caution to the wind and he's like make or break he says mom i never had a plan b because i don't plan on failing he says there might be more than one way to skin a cat he says but you know he says, you got to figure out all those different ways. And he says, and I'm working on it. So, I will let you know as soon as I know anything and as soon as it's, you know. But he did apply for two things that could be awesome. Could, could be just amazing. So, keep him in your thoughts and your prayers and your good vibes and your mojo. And, and just whatever you have to send him send it he needs it so anyway i'm super proud of him though as you can tell uh, in the farmhouse so right now i'm finishing up christmas the only ones that i don't have done is rj and my daughter's other half so my daughter's crafty um that kind of stuff so i found one thing that I'm going to do for her other half, moving the sweater back, by the way. Um, and I found this because I had to, we had to buy a new cutting board. And the wooden ones we've decided we don't like because it cuts up and you, you can feel it more than you can quit. You can feel it more than you can see it. But the whole cutting board is dipped down in and this is raw. I'm trying to, let me see here. This is raw, like it probably should be sanded down. Um, so yeah, we had to buy a new one. It's plastic. It's a little bit bigger than we wanted, but it'll fit over the sink, so we can just right into the other sink. And see, this one had these things, so that, but look, it's nasty and coming off, and it's rusting. So I am going to have these cut off. Okay, that is going to leave me this little tray. Then I am going to paint this to say cookies and cocoa. It, it's just going to say cookies and cocoa, and then it's going to have like a snowflake, you know, just some. And I'm going to do it probably in blues, whites, silvers, that kind of thing, like a little country theme. Um, and it, like I said, it's got the little legs and it sits up and it just will be a little wooden cookies and cocoa set down. And I honestly thought about leaving these, but I also thought I could put two little handles, take that and just put two little handles right here. So who knows? I am going to do that for him. It'll be solid wood. It'll be a cute little conversation piece and 
it'll be functional. So yeah, I will get that done and designed um, before Christmas. And he's the last one I have. The only other thing I've been doing is all my spare time in the farmhouse has been uh, making that sweater. So um, I just, that's all I've been working on, really. <laughs> that's terrible. But now that it's done, I'll have more stuff for in the farmhouse. Um, yeah. So, anyway, those are the things that have been going on. Pray for RJ. Um, I'm going to wrap it up now. It's just one of those deals. Uh, pray for him. Send him mojo. Whatever you can do. Um, good vibes. Good feelings. Uh, I will let you know as soon as it is feasible what was going on, but I can't share that right now. So, um, it is what it is. I ask that you just have faith in him and send him everything you got. So, anyway, all right, well, I'm going to get off here. Um, I am going to go get rid of this sweet potato root. I, uh, I only kept it to show you guys because it's so huge. I've never had one. I've had tubulars, you know, like they're round and they're long. Never had one that looks that big, ever. So <laughs> I was like, holy cow. But anyway, um, I will get off of here, get stuff. I got to get some stuff done around here. Um, go get the last of the running done for Thanksgiving. And next week, I uh, don't know what my days off are going to be. I've got to work. I'm low in on the totem pole. Next week is Thanksgiving. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, but, alright. I don't know if I'm going to podcast next week. That's the thing. So, we'll go from there. Alright. I'm off of here. Pray for RJ. Send him your mojo and good stuff. Uh, and I will see you guys when I see you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.